Thank you so much, Lisa. Good morning. I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. I want to welcome each and every one of you. Uh, we got Zoom back uh, last week. It didn't work so well because the cable was went bad, but Scott worked with, uh, I think it was Comcast, and got that worked uh, squared away. So we should be uh, doing better. We should even actually have better speed now because we were sort of like, doing it along with the daycare, but that we have a separate cable for ourselves now. So there'll be a YouTube link and an audio link being sent out later in the day. So again, uh, it's a joy to be here together. I want to welcome each and every one of you as we praise and glorify our risen Lord. Uh, still have two uh, Monday night Bible study at seven o'clock. We're uh, studying first Corinthians. We have uh, Bible study, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., 2 Peter, and Thursday morning, 10 a.m., and we're looking at the Acts of the Apostles. So you're welcome to all of that. There's going to be a Christian education uh, committee meeting at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, and I'm going to send the link out to everyone. So if you are interested in becoming a part of the Christian Education Committee, please access that link, 7 o'clock, and I'm sure the Christian Education Committee is, will be happy to have you uh, participate, uh, but that link will go out uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, so look for it, and uh, if you're on the Christian Education Committee, you know we'll see you at seven. If not, uh, if you'd like to join, you know access it, and you'll be on the Christian Education Committee. So, uh, so we look forward to that. Any other announcements? Yes, Adam. Okay, um, prayers for Patty and Melissa. Okay. Thank you for making it simple for me, Patty and Melissa. Anyone else? Yes, Lori. Yeah, uh, Lori's dad passed away two weeks ago. Tuesday, Tuesday, and the funeral was Friday, right? Thursday, funeral was Thursday. So definitely keep uh, Patty in your prayers and the entire her, her entire family as they mourn the passing of uh, Bill, uh, her dad. So, uh, any others? Yes, Roger. Gay and uh, Tom, got that. Okay, they're out of the hospital? Okay, great, super. Any others? We want to keep prayers for all the students that are going back to school. Uh, I know uh, there are some who are leaving this week. There will be some who will be leaving uh, the following week or in two weeks, but we're seeing a lot of students. And West Mifflin is going back, right? Do we know that? I, th I heard that they are. Is uh, TJ? Okay. They got online or hybrid. So we want to keep the students, if they're doing Zoom or online, if they are doing, uh, if they're going back, we want everyone to stay safe. And again, we're still maintaining social distancing and face masks, except for the people on this side uh, up front. Um, so, uh, but everybody else would certainly, um, uh, and, and these folks, if they have some issue that they can't wear the mask, but we thank everyone honoring that and we want to keep everyone safe. Any other announcements, any other prayer, joys or concerns? If not, then let us sit ourselves on the worship of God. Okay, please stand, we'll get some energy in our body. That the Lord hath made, we will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let's do 
that one one more time. We're gonna get some energy in your body. So let's go back to the beginning. So let me see some clapping. Come on, I'm doing a bouncy, bouncy beat here. Ready? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord had made, that the Lord had made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord had made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gates with praise. I will say this is the day. I will enter his gates. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. time this is the day this is the day this is the day that the lord has been that the lord has made we will rejoice we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad want to re-emphasize if you're if you're not going to wear a mask sit up here if you're going to sit anywhere else please put your mask on thanks a lot appreciate it go ahead happy sunday happy let sunday. us join together in our responsive call to worship oh give thanks to the lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the peoples sing, to him. sing praises to him test of all his wondrous works Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and his judgment he uttered. O oh, offsprings of Abraham, his servants, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The, the word, word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Let us worship God. So we haven't done this one for a while down by the riverside. So I just want you to remember that when you have praise in your heart, I want you to really express that because if we kind of hold it back and, and just kind of do this, if you're feeling it, just just let that feeling come forward. Let's do that one one more time. Gonna lay down my burden down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Gonna lay down my burden down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I ain't gonna study one no more. Ain't gonna study one no more. Talk 
can sing and shout down by the riverside down by the riverside down by the riverside gonna walk and talk and sing and shout down by the riverside down by the riverside gonna put on that long white robe down by the riverside down by the riverside down by the riverside gonna put on that long white robe down by the riverside down by the riverside gonna meet my dear savior down by the riverside down by the riverside down by the riverside gonna meet my dear savior down by the riverside down by the riverside i will finally walk with my lord down by the riverside down by the riverside down by the riverside i will finally walk with my lord down by the riverside down by the Let us go to God in unison and ask for his mercy and grace. God most high. We thank, thank you, you that you are God and that you have called us to be your people. Forgive us when we do wrong by not doing what we should do or by doing what we know is wrong. Help us to all be aware of your word in our lives and to never turn away in order to seek our own desires. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Christian friends, we know we sin, we know we fall short, but we also know that God loves us and that despite our sinfulness, God pulls us and draws us back to himself. So hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let's remain standing and affirm what we believe by sharing together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray that God will open our hearts and minds. Dear Lord, we ask for your wisdom so that we can discern your word of truth and share it with the world that desires falsehood. Open us to your son that we will know that he is the Lord and that you raised him from the dead as the first fruit of our own resurrection. We ask this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Our first reading today comes from Apostle Matthew, or chapter 14, 22 through 33. Immediately, he made his disciples get out of the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was long away from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the seas, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come, on, come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got back in the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May the Lord bless this reading and our understanding of his most holy word. So this morning I have something a little more fun for you. Um, I found a, a great arrangement, and I thought it was such a great idea. I love um, Vince Guaraldi with the Peanuts theme. Um, I've always loved his style. So I found this, that uh, he combined Linus and Lucy with nothing but the blood. So I thought this was a, a great arrangement.
Well, thanks so much, Lisa. That was, that was really wonderful. Uh, I know most of us uh, have seen the Peanuts Christmas, right? That's where it comes from. Did anyone feel like getting up and start dancing the way they do in the same? I, I, I got to admit, I was, you know, that like, you know, but I was expecting someone to do it, but I wasn't going to be the first. What's that? Next time. Next time. That's it. Okay. Our passage today comes from the, uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 10, verses 5 to 21. While we're listening and throughout the sermon, think and ask yourself, do we believe to be saved or do we believe for some other purpose? Keep that in your mind. So Paul says, for Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, had they not heard, indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to the earth, to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. But I asked, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But if Israel, he says, all day long I've held out my hands, to a disobedient and contrary people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, when we hear, hear the term back to basics, what do we think? There's a lot of stuff out there but to get through all that stuff, do we really need? How much of that do we really, really need? We first got to get back to basics. Now, we understand through our scripture passage today that God extends to us faith and belief through the power of the Holy Spirit, which then leads to our understanding, our salvation through the resurrection of Christ. And that's great. But again, how do we get there and do sometimes we complicate things. Now, again, when we look at learning, you know, there's basic reading, there's basic writing, there's basic everything, history, even basic arithmetic. Now, I know that's wrong. I, I know that one plus one equals five. So don't worry about that. I know that. Yeah, that is a joke. I know it's, it is three, right? Okay. Uh, but we have basics on everything. But how often do we get complicated so much that we forget what the basics are and we get lost in the complexity? That can certainly be said about theology. Now, everyone has theology. Theology is the study of God or the understanding of God. Everyone has an understanding of God. We ask 13-year-olds uh, to write their theology and their statement of faith. We ask our elders or deacons. We've even suggested it to uh, individuals. Sometimes the people write no more than three or four sentences, a paragraph. Other times they write uh, an extended theology. 
And sometimes it can get very complicated, especially in the reform tradition, because the reform tradition has a number of things that we got to keep track of. We have the five pillars, or as we call it, the five solas. It's Christ alone, scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, glory to God alone. Then we got the uh, five points of reform theology, Calvinism, tulip, total depravity, conditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints, Wow. Now, our elders and deacon candidates are now elders and deacons. They learned that. All the elders and deacons have learned that. I have shared that in, in, in sermon and messages and in pastor's pens. So it's out there. But even I got to remember that sometimes, or even I know that sometimes it's like, whoa, what, what is all this about? How complicated is the theology that we're, that we're supposed to know? And sometimes we get lost in that theology. So let's go back to the basic. A is for apple. What, what does that mean? What, what is the basis of what we should understand? I think Paul reveals that here in our passage. So let's begin. In uh, verse 5, when it says, Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. That seems pretty basic. Moses writes about the commandments. Righteousness is based on the law. Live by them. Great. But did you know that sometimes facts change? If that was a fact then, is that a fact now? James Carville, and some of you might know, know who he is. He's a political op operative, a Democratic political operative. Um, but he says, and I agree with him, when facts change, you change your mind. And that's a hard concept for some people to get. Sometimes it's like, this is what I know. This is what I'll, I'll always know it. How many planets are there today? What? Eight. When I was growing up, wasn't there nine? You know? So I, I still say there's nine. There's, there are nine planets, period. In fact, I just heard they're about to name a planetoid a planet, so we're going to go back to nine. It was nine, it was eight, now it's nine again. Okay, fine. Facts change. They, they vary. But when facts change, we have to change our mind, but some people really don't like doing that. Okay. But it also leads to understanding. You know, it says in Philippians, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. That seems to supersede the idea that the law produces righteousness. Now we understand that righteousness is produced through faith in Christ. And we do, when we look at the purposes of the law, and this again, I don't want to get com complex here, but there are a bunch of purposes of the law, and none of them are to lead us to righteousness. They lead us, okay, how to be uh, joyful, how to treat others, how to uh, uh, understand where we are, how to please God, but also how to reveal sin. How to help us understand that we cannot keep sin, uh, we cannot be righteous that the fact that we have the law reveals us how we're going to sin. So again, the A is for apple part of Moses gave us the law, law produces righteousness, we're good to go, is not so much the truth. The law does, was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So there's a purpose for the law, great, but now we have to get deeper to understand what that A for apple really is. So Paul goes on to say, but the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Okay, what is Paul essentially saying? Talk about what you know. Sometimes in theology and sometimes in our faith, we can get so complex that we are talking about stuff we really don't know. Don't speak if you, if you don't know what you're talking about. 
That seems to be a basic adage we all should have about all aspects of life. And I think that should be the adage we have about theology, about our understanding. But even more so, you don't have to say everything you know, but also make sure that when you say something, know what you say. That means that sometimes if we meet someone who does not know Christ, we don't need to talk to them about the five solas, or we don't need to talk to them about the five points of Calvinism. We don't need to talk to them about the complexities. They need some spiritual milk. Jesus loves you, not the complexity of, hey, let's tell you what supernominism is. And I don't even know if I know what that is. But you certainly don't want to start, talk about something you don't know, and sometimes what you do know doesn't need to be shared. But then Paul gets down to it. Well, what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Bottom line. Bottom line. The absolute basic of the Christian faith. If you confess Jesus is Lord, believe that God raised him from the dead, boom, shakalaka, you are saved. That's it. So, that should give a lot of us, especially if we have difficulty remembering the five points of Calvinism, the five solas, all this other stuff, a lot of comfort. All you gotta do, confess. All you gotta do is believe. Great. For Paul goes on to say, for, the, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and, say, and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. So he explains to us the point of confession. He explains us the point of believing. And he says it again in Ephesians, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. It's a gift of God. What we believe and what we confess is not something that we generate out of our sinful minds. We're sitting here, we're sitting here doing our own, looking to our own desires, own finite, limited, selfish, sinful uh, selves, and suddenly, oh, Jesus is the Lord, God raised him from the dead. No, this is a gift. Our ability to comprehend this and to understand this comes from God directly. For we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we do not, and we do not lean on our own understanding in all your ways, Acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Our understanding, our belief, our confession does not come from us, does not come from our own understanding. It comes from God. It's his gift. He presents it to us. He gives it to us because he's elected us. He's called us specifically by name to salvation, and he has now laid before us the path we're supposed to walk. And along this path, grace leads to faith. Faith leads to understanding. And understanding leads to proclamation. So again, I keep in mind, is the point salvation or is the point something else? And he continues, for there's no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who confesses Jesus Christ will be saved. Now, again, we, we look to the basic truths of sometimes what we share with our kids. God loves me. Jesus wants to be my friend forever. God made me. And that's all true. But again, that A is for apple. We also have to recognize we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. But we also know that God is God. And he makes no distinction between Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female. God keeps his promise to hold us, to redeem us, to love us, to call us to himself. 
and he calls us to be united in him. If A is for apple, B is for ball, C is for cat, D is for dog. I mean, again, there's some basics that we build upon. And Paul says, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So you see there's a, there's a, 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 a direction it's going. Grace leads to faith, leads to understanding, leads to proclamation. God leads us on that path. He gives us our stories. I was saying this to, I was talking at the breakfast table this morning and, and saying that everyone has a backstory. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a story that got you here today. Everyone has a story about how you came to faith. One of the joys of uh, being on session is hearing that as our Elders come on, and every month we have an elder talk about their, uh, their witness, their testimony. They do that on the mission committee. And you see everyone has that story, that witness of what they believe, how they came to faith. It's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing to hear. And it's not just reserved to those who are called to be elders or deacons. It's everyone in this room has that story. And that story is, we're called to take that story, what we know, not what we don't know, but what we know and how Jesus has touched our lives, and we are sent to take that story into the world and proclaim it. To all those people out there who have yet to understand their own story. Because sometimes people don't get their own story. Sometimes people just compartmentalize and that was then, now this is now, and I'm going to focus on today, and I'm going to forget about tomorrow, not knowing that everything that happened yesterday is impacting them today and will impact them tomorrow. But once they come to their understanding of their story and understanding how Jesus Christ has touched their lives, redeemed them, saved them, now they are called to proclaim him. But how well do we do that? If not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what, is, what he has heard from us? To faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So how well do we know God's word? How well do we share God's word? And how well do we live God's word? We're supposed to do that. We're supposed to know it, love it, live it. We're, but we got to know it first. And, I, and we have folks who come on the Bible studies, and we know there are folks out there who are reading, reading Scripture on their own. Praise the Lord. We glorify God for that. But that should be on every one of us should be looking at Scripture on a regular basis to know it, to love it, to live it out in our lives. Again, we don't do this on our own. We do this through the power of the Holy Spirit, but we open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. Or we can not submit to the will of the Spirit and do our own thing, which basically means we're going to do our own thing and live to our own desires and not know the word, not love it, not live it. We're going to live our own lives. Now, good news, basic, God still loves you. Even in your disobedience, even in our disobedience, God still loves us. And God still holds us and God still calls us back. It's like that disobedient child or that stubborn parent. You're hoping for the day, they'll get it right. They're hoping for the day they'll get understanding. I know parents find that moment when they're, they're, you see that light come on in their children's eyes and they're finally doing it the way they should be doing it. We go, praise the Lord. And I know there are children out there going, yeah, I'm looking for the day for mom and dad too. Maybe one day. Paul continues. And he asked, but I ask, have you not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. 
With a foolish nation, I'll make you angry. Some people do miss the point entirely. Some people are just so incredibly stubborn. But that ignorance is something else. Jeremiah says, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. There was this another slide I was going to use that, that translated Jeremiah a little differently. It says, listen up, ye stupid and brainless people. I decided not to use that one, but I thought it was interesting how they interpreted that. But when you think about it, when we put our heads in the sand, when we refuse to see, refuse to hear, we're doing it intentionally. We're doing it intentionally. It's really sort of moves away from ignorance. Ignorance is hearing, but not understanding or just not learning yet. Stupidity is, I know it's out there, but I'm going to close my ears, close my eyes. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. And Paul finishes up by saying that Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But if Israel, the foolish ones who do not understand, all day long I've held up my hands to a dis disobedient and contrary people. We can sometimes be Israel. Well, I'll take it back. We at oftentimes can be Israel. We're like the three wise monkeys. The see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. We just are in silence. But that's really not true either. It's really not silence. It's in stewing in our own juices of sin. Doing the things we want because we want and disobeying God. Now, Helen Keller, some of you may know who Helen Keller is. Who knows who Helen Keller is? Okay, Helen Keller, for those who don't, was born blind and was born deaf and as a result could not speak. Born this way. Now, a woman named Ann Sullivan came and helped her be able to understand the world. Imagine that, blind and deaf, could not speak. And she says, the only thing worse than being blind is having, no, is having sight but no vision. Not, but not seeing that there's a world out there and there's a plan out there. How blind are we? How deaf, how deaf are we? How mute are we? How are we not glorifying God and enjoying forever? And this comes back to my question. Is the point of confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead to be saved? It never says that in scripture. It says you will be saved. But then it goes on, Paul goes on to say, okay, the point is to understand and to proclaim to glorify God that Jesus is the Lord and to confess and to believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, to glorify God and to enjoy what we know it to be. So if we believe that, and that is the point of our own salvation, we are called to be bold in our faith and to proclaim the truth for everyone that have ears to hear and eyes to see, hearts that can be moved and hands that can serve to proclaim that truth to the world when the world doesn't want to hear it, the world doesn't want to see it, the world doesn't want to deal with it. But nevertheless, because of what we know that God in Christ loves us, because what we know that Jesus Christ came to die for us, because what we know that he promises us presence with him for all eternity, we proclaim Jesus. Because it, when it comes down to it, that A is for Apple, it's all about Jesus. We proclaim Christ 
admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone, everyone perfect in Christ to God. And we do that in our journey of life. We do that along the way we walk. We do that in every single possible moment we have in what we do, what we say, what we think. And when we sin and we will sin, when we fall away and we will fall away, we turn back to Christ, proclaim him again with the power and the knowledge that he has forgiven us, he redeems us, and he calls us to himself again and again and again. Because we are told this simple thing, in the end, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We do it not for ourselves. We do it for the glory of God. So Christian friends, let us proclaim Jesus Christ. Let us understand what Christ has done for us. Let us proclaim what Christ is doing for us and let us share with the, with the world. This is the A is for Apple, the back to basics. This is what it's all about, the bottom line. All to the glory of God through Christ Jesus. In his holy name, amen. Christian friends, let's go to God through prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you just thankful that you love us, and despite our sinfulness, despite our sinfulness, you call us to yourself time and time and time again. And we know that because you've called us, you will never, ever forget us. You will never cast us aside. So we can come to you with our prayers, knowing that you are with us, knowing that you hold us, and knowing that you love us. Lord, we ask your blessings on Emily and Brian, a couple, he just found out Brian has cancer. Be with them as they struggle through this illness. Lord, we ask your blessings on Cheryl, Joyce Weber's sister, who's doing so much better. We thank you for that. We ask you to be with Reg Legg's uh, sister-in-law, Lynn, who has uh, encephalitis. She's doing better, but she's still ill. And with his other sister-in-law, Loretta, who is also getting better, moving back into their home. And be with Reg and Doreen's nephew, Asandre, who's meeting some challenges in life. Lord, be with Ann Richards and her husband, Tom. Tom Richards' parents who are struggling. Give them your presence. Give them your love. Be with Jim Pickett, who's doing so much better after weeks in ICU after being intubated. Not because of COVID, but for other issues, but he is doing better, and we praise you. Truly a miracle story. Lord, we ask you to be with Lori Broadwater, her entire family, as they mourn the passing of Lori's dad, Bill. We thank you so much for Dave Broadwater as he supports Lori. Give her strength, give him strength, give them all strength during this time of sadness. Lord, continue to be with Jim as he mourns the passing of Mary. Be with Patty and Melissa. Lord, be with Jim's niece, Christine, and her daughter, Sarah, who are struggling. Be with Patty Wonka's aunt and uncle, Dee and Ray Welks. Josh McLean, who was a lineman who fell and who's been in I ICU for so long, who's recovering. Be with Dean Keebler, two-year-old who has an epileptic seizure. Seizure. With Pat Nichols' sister and brother-in-law, Gay and Tom. We praise the Lord that they're out of the hospital, they're doing better, we thank you. Be with Bernadette, Kim Berenger's friend, who's struggling, as well as Harlow Rose. We thank you and praise you for Harlow Rose, uh, Tom, Tom Fox's newest great-granddaughter. Be with Ann Fox as she recovers, and Lord, be with all of us as we seek to do your will, 
be your people. Proclaim your son and glorify you forever. Lord, thank you so much for everyone gathered here, everyone that will gather on Zoom and YouTube and, and Christians around the world and who are struggling with the distancing because it's so much a part of fellowship. But knowing that you are God and you hold us in the palm of your hand and that you will keep us and you will hold us. And we thank you for that. So we ask your blessings on us as your people, as your church, as your sons and daughters. All in your son's holy name, we toss to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christian friends, it is right and proper that we return a portion of what God's given to us back to his ministry. There is a basket in the back. As you leave, please uh, drop your offering. And again, for those online and for those at home, uh, you can send your offering in, and we would really appreciate to maintain the ministry as we are striving to do even in the midst of COVID. We do this not because we have to. We do this because we want, want to, because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Dear Lord, bless these gifts and bless our gifts to you of time, talent, financial resources, always as we seek to show the world that we are Christians through our love to one another. In his holy name, amen. Christian friends, as we leave this place today, let us leave knowing that A is for Apple. And that the basic of our faith is that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in our hearts that God will, uh, that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. But that's not the bottom line. The bottom line is through that we proclaim to the world our story, our story of Jesus Christ. And in that, we come to the basic, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Let's proclaim that to the world. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of God's Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us now and always. Amen. Amen.